Hi Sunview, it's Miss Alyssa or Mrs. Hilliard. Um, I wasn't going to make a video for this week, but I had a lot of families who signed up for one last week of OT, so I wanted to do a quick activity so that we could finish up the school year on a good note. You do not have to do this activity this week. Um, it's just an option, um, but I wanted to have something ready for you. So I have my bins, one, two, and three. The hand strengthening for this week, um, I'm using simple household um, objects that you might have. So this week I have rubber bands and a canned food item. So to strengthen fingers, we're gonna take those rubber bands and put them around the can. And you're gonna work on strengthening those fingers, stretching rubber bands, putting them around the can. And you could probably do up to 20. I do not have 20 rubber bands for the video, but this is a great activity for hand strength. Um, it also teaches kids how to use rubber bands. Um, the other activity I had was for early learners or kindergartners or kids who are developmentally uh, young, and that is a hand preference activity. I have um, an egg crate and some golf tees and a meat tenderizer. Um, I, I would prefer if you would use like a wooden spoon or um, a play plastic mallet from like a whack-a-mole game or a little tool set that you might have. Um, and this is great because it's heavy work and heavy work is what encourages hand preference. So I just have the kids hammer in the golf tees one at a time. This is something you can make on your own. You don't have to do it in our session. I use it a lot with preschool and kindergarten. And again, you can always start your fine motor warm up with Play-Doh or Therapy Buddy. That's box number one. For our craft this week, it's Memorial Day and I want to thank all of those soldiers and sailors out there who have protected our country. Um, so this is in your honor. I hope you're all having a great day. Um, this is a Betsy Ross flag. Instead of punching 50 stars, we punch 13 to represent the 13 colonies during the American Revolutionary War. Um, and again, we have our 13 stripes with red on the bottom. Um, and for that, you will need a red sheet of paper, fold it in half vertically, a blue sheet of paper, and a white sheet of paper. Now for the blue sheet of paper, you actually only need a quarter. So I folded this twice to get a quarter sheet of paper. Um, so I have this pre-cut already. I'm gonna set that aside. The other thing you will need also is possibly a ruler to make straight lines, a marker and scissors, glue, and a hole puncher if you have it. All those things. So we're going to start by getting our white piece of paper out and our red piece of paper. Oh, wrong white sheet of paper. And I'm just going to fold. Remember, line up the corners and fold our red sheet of paper. I'm going to cut it in half on the line that we made. And I'm going to make my seven lines across here. So we have seven stripes. They don't have to be perfect. You can use your ruler if you want. This is great for kids who are a little older to practice using a ruler. And they're about a half an inch wide. So if you want to measure a half an inch and make dots so that your kids can connect the dots, that would work too. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now I tried this with wider stripes earlier and they do not all fit on the paper. So again, a half an inch would be perfect. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna cut on those lines. And if you wanna pre-cut some of these parents so your kids' hands don't get tired, you have them cut maybe three or four, especially for grades K through three. Um, that would be good. I think the third graders can handle cutting on all the lines, but some of our kindergartners and first graders make it a little tired. 
And this is great doing the American flag because it allows us to work on those horizontal stripes. And we actually did this in my preschool video. We always try to keep the same craft and we call it grading the craft. When we grade the craft, we make it easier or make it more difficult. And we always try to make it a little more challenging for the kids who are able to handle the challenge or be able to master that skill. So now we have our seven stripes, so you can count those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're gonna start by putting our red stripe on the bottom. And then we're gonna space them out as best as we can, going all the way up. And again, it might, the spacing might not be perfect. These stripes are a little skinnier. Make sure you push those down because when you lift up your paper, they might fall off. They and mine are not perfect, but that's okay because we are learning. All right, I'm gonna pat them down and then this is my flag. And then I'm gonna take that quarter sheet of blue paper Put glue on the back. Some kids might those, need those X's to know where to put the glue. And put it in the upper left-hand corner of the flag. And then I'm gonna take my hole puncher in a scrap of white paper and make 13 hole punches. So we can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. My hole puncher has a little catcher on the bottom, so I gotta let all those little guys out of there. Some are stuck. There we go. Now we're gonna take our glue stick and make a circle in the blue square. So we're practicing our circles. I don't know if you can see that circle. And then using our pincher fingers, our pincer fingers, we're gonna pick up the little white circles that we punched and put them around the circle on the glue. This could get messy. If you have stickers at home, or even if you have white paint, you can always paint um, the stars on as well. We do a lot of Q-tip painting at school, but I do not have white paint at home today. three. It helps to pick them up when you have glue on your fingers. And this is good for our sensory kids who like who don't like to get their hands dirty. Um, it kind of will help desensitize them a little bit and offer them that sensory experience. And we made our Betsy Ross flag for Memorial Day. So you can see I need to work on my stripe spacing a little bit, but it's still a great fine motor skill. So that is our craft. And then I did um, print out a poem for you guys to practice your writing. So this one's called Proud. Um, if I carry a flag and march with the band, and if I stand very tall, I hope I show that I am proud of our soldiers and proud of the flag and all. So I'm gonna hold that up just for a little while and you guys can freeze the screen if you want and copy this in your best writing using your homemade high right paper with your highlighted lines. Remember, I always look for letters sitting on the line and word spacing. And um, some of you don't drop the tails 
uh, down below the writing line for Y and P and G. So we work on that a lot in OT too. Those are called our go fishing letters. So sometimes I'll draw water under the writing line and kids draw their G and they have to take the hook down below to catch the fish. So that's one strategy you can use at home too. All right. I'll hurry this up so you can get outside and enjoy your day. The last thing we're going to do is shoe tying. And this is the two loop method. You can see I anchored my shoelaces inside. I had a mom teach me that. We're going to pull up our bunny ears, make that X, look for that space down below. The one behind goes down through the tunnel, pull out to the side, bring them up. And I actually mark these laces with two little red um, dots so that when we cross the second time, we cross at the red dots. And that way, it helps us save that space down below. Push through and pull. And we tied our shoe using the adaptive method. So some of you don't use the um, adaptive method, and that is okay. I have some of you doing really well with shoe tying, um, working on Zoom, and I'm really, really proud of you. So I was gonna take these knots out of here, and just in case you're watching this video, you can practice with me tying shoes. So we don't need those anchors for our standard shoe tying. This is a great fine motor skill, trying to get out knots. All right, so pull your laces up, Drop them, hold them up, look for the X, the one that beh that's behind goes down through the tunnel. Pull, make a bunny ear, make sure you have that knot in your other lace. The knot flies around the bunny ear. Save that tunnel, down through the tunnel, and pull. All right, I just wanna thank everybody for joining me in uh, virtual occupational therapy or teletherapy every week. I've really enjoyed meeting everyone's family and working with all of you. I hope to see you back in school in the fall. If not, stay tuned. I will keep adding to the website. Um, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.